Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And this is my brothers and sisters. For all of you who are watching with us online this morning, we thank you for being here today. We want to let you know how much we appreciate your support and how much we appreciate you encouraging us online. So do me a favor. Go ahead right now. Let us know that you're here. Give us a high five. Give us a comment. Let us know that you're here. We're taking attendance this morning and we want 100% participation from all of our members all of our new cyber members all over the world, even right now. So let us know you're here, but I want to tell you the reason we're here today is to give honor, glory, and praise to the God that we serve. David said it like this, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are here today to worship God in spirit and in truth. So before we go any farther on today, I want to pause for just a moment of silence and a word of prayer to prepare our hearts and minds to praise his precious and his holy name. So this time let us bow for a silent moment of meditation. Good God Almighty, we come down with our heads bowed and our hearts humble, Lord, to tell you thank you for being our friend. Lord, thank you for being our provider. And Lord, in this season, we want to say thank you for being our protector. Lord, we know that you are a God who can do anything but fail. So here we are today, Lord, to bow down. Here we are today, Lord, to worship you, to tell the world that you are our king, and beside you there is no other. Lord, look into our lives. Come into our spaces. Come into our living rooms. Come into our bedrooms. Come into uh, our technology on today that, that everything we say and that everything we do will serve the purpose of bringing you glory. Lord, this is the day that you have made. Help us, even in a pandemic, to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we need you now more than ever. So send your spirit so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. This is our prayer in Jesus' name that every child of God say amen, amen. and amen. I want to read into your hearing as we get ready for worship. Psalm 103 and verse number 1. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget none of his wonderful benefits. I hope, trust, and pray that on today you will worship and not just watch, but that you will watch and worship with us as we praise the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 
say thank you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you one more time. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Come on, thank you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Oh, yeah. That he died to save my soul. For crying that he did not commit. All for the blood. He paid a price that he did not commit. I want to say thank you. Text any dollar amount 
Uh, text out of Luke 5 1 to 4 5 7 7 7. That, that's right. Text Luke 5 1 to 4 5 7 7 7. And then you put in your dollar amount, whatever it is the Lord puts on your heart to give. We appreciate it in this season. Listen, I don't want you to think for one minute that your money, your offering, is not serving the purpose, even in the pandemic, of advancing God's kingdom. Let me tell you one story about what God has been able to do to bless somebody through your generosity in this season. Just on yesterday, we found a family who worships here who was on the brink of being put out of their, their dwelling place. But because of your generosity, hear me, we were able to partner with them to get their rent paid and give them grocery money for the next two weeks. I think that's a reason for us to tell God thank you that we worship with a church that don't mind giving because somebody taught us long before I ever showed up that you can't be God given. Let me give you some scripture for that. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over. Listen, that's the kind of God that we serve. If we are faithful with our finances, he'll make sure that our cup always runs over. So we want to encourage you to give. Finally, if you want to give and you don't want to do text, you can go to our website www.lakecoc.org and you can click that donate button on the first page and we'll be grateful for whatever you set aside to give back to God through the Lake Pomo Church. Let's go to God in a word of prayer to ask Him to bless our offering. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is our name in all the earth. Lord, when we consider how you have been faithful in providing for us, even in a pandemic, we want to tell you thank you. Lord, we thank you for everything you're doing. We thank you for keeping a roof over our heads. Lord, we thank you for keeping food on our table. And we thank you for keeping money in our bank account. Yeah. And Lord, as we prepare our hearts and minds to give, we ask that you will bless us to be the kind of givers that you love. Cheerful givers. Knowing that as we give, it shall be given back to us. 10, 20, 30, and even a hundredfold. Lord, help us to be mindful of the fact that in this season there are folks who have need and you have not blessed us to be selfish but you have blessed us to be selfless remind us that as we give somebody is going to receive a blessing Lord we love you we thank you for what you've already done and we thank you for what you're going to do as we raise this offering in Jesus name we pray let us all say amen, amen.
Amen. So open your Bibles to Psalm number 20. Psalm number 20 and verse number 1. We're going to begin reading at verse number 1. Uh, and somebody laughed at me last week, but I'm going to ask you to do the same thing in your living room. Go ahead and stand up. If you lay on your bed, get out the bed. Amen. Uh, as we stand to our feet in reference and respect to the reading of God's holy and divine word, the Bible says in Psalm 20 and verse number 1, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high. May he send you help from the sanctuary and support you from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and find your burnt offerings acceptable, Selah. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all of your counsel. Then the Bible says, we will sing for joy over your victory. Did y'all hear what I just said? We will sing for joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all of your petitions. What a word. Now, the Bible says in verse number six, now, I'm going to try it one more time. Now, y'all type in now. Now, I know that the Lord saves his anointed, and he will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Here it is. Some boast in chariots and some boast in horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord our God. Come on, somebody, that's your word right there. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stood upright. Save, O oh Lord. Save, O oh Lord. Save, O oh Lord. May the king answer us in the day we call. Let us pray. Good God Almighty, we come with our heads bowed again, but not because we are afraid, but we come because we adore you. Lord, we come to tell you first, thank you for everything. We come because we, are, we know that you are a God who can do anything but fail. So, Lord, right now in this season, we ask you to open up your windows of heaven and pour out blessings on everybody on this broadcast. That so much that we don't have room to receive. Lord, we ask in this preaching moment that you would show up and that you would show out and that you would do something so holy and something so mighty and something so awesome in this preaching moment that somebody comes to know your son as both Lord and Savior. Now, Lord, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. This is our prayer that we pray in Jesus' name, that all of God's children who agree say amen, amen. and amen. I want to preach today from the subject and share with you from the subject, God is big enough. Let me try that one more time. I don't care what they say and who said it. I want you to declare from the bottom of your heart and the depth of your soul, God is big enough. One more time for the Holy Ghost and the people in the back. Y'all shout and type it. Just lift up your voice and say, God is big enough. Uncertainty. Indefinite, indeterminate, and indiscriminate. These are words that define where we are. My brothers and my sisters, in a, if in a moment of crystal clear candor and acute awareness, you and I will discover and discuss that this is not just where we are, but the truth is, is that this is where we've always been. Brothers and sisters, coronavirus woke us up to the realities that have always existed. That there is more that makes us common than there is that allows us to secure this, brother, to have this false sense of security called, called exclusivity. 
in a conversation with my brother and colleague on last night, Pastor DeLeo Howard of Indianapolis, Indiana, he showed me that in this season, the humanity of mankind makes us fragile and visibly vulnerable. But church, I've got good news this morning that even in a season of confusion, ethical conflict, and all kinds of mistaken identity when courage can be confused as cowardice and faithfulness can be mistaken for foolishness, there is one place in our lives where our conversation needs to be as sure as concrete. And that is, no matter how bad your situation may be, your God is big enough to handle this. Somebody in their living room needs to type amen right there because you've been in some bad situations before. You've been in some dark spaces before. And I ought to have two or three witnesses watching me this morning who know that no matter what happens, God is big enough. Yes, he is. That, that, that is that God is big enough. But the truth of the matter is many have asked me, how will we face this? What is the church's response? And the, 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 the answer to that question is the same as it has always been. And it ain't deep. It, it, it ain't that significant. It ain't that long. It's real short. The response for the child of God that faces a fear-producing pandemic is one word, faith. I want to say it one more time. Listen, what is the church's response? What are we going to do? Well, we're going to have faith. Faith, the Bible says, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The Bible says that now, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh unto him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. The Bible says that we shall walk by faith and not by sight. My brothers and my sisters, when you are lying on your bed looking up facing fear for tomorrow, the response for the child of God is we've got to have faith. Let me tell you, it's faith that got us to where we are. It's faith that brought us over. It's faith that got us through. And it's faith that's going to take us forward. I can't get to tell somebody that you would not have got to have the faith that it takes to believe that God is able to do what he said he was going to do. But here's the truth of the matter. Most folks don't have enough faith to believe that God is able to do what he said he was going to do. Truth is that no one is ever really at ease in facing what we call life and death, though, without real faith. Here it is, my brothers and sisters, the trouble with many people today is that we have not found a God who is big enough to have faith in. I knew that was going to mess you up. I knew that was going to throw you off when I said it, when I wrote it, when I was praying over it. The truth is, is that in seasons like these, we can no longer rely on a relationship that we develop with God when we were 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 years old sitting around a Sunday school table. No, my brothers and sisters, just like you've grown in your career, just like you've grown in your bank account, just like you've grown in your academic pursuits, just like your family has grown, I've come today to tell you that your faith needs to grow. And so somebody in this in your living room is sitting there watching me this morning, and you want to know how am I going to be able to face the fear that this thing is producing in my life? How am I going to be able to get up in the morning and look at my children in the eye and tell them everything is going to be all right? Well, just like you invested in your education, just like you invested in getting a bigger house, just like you invested in driving a bigger car, now is the time to invest in your faith. Well, how about you, dear preacher? I'm so glad you asked. The Bible said so that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me tell you something in your cyber sanctuary this morning. It's time for us again, I'll say it again, to turn off the radio, get off of Facebook, leave Instagram alone, turn the news off, open up your Bible, and read that old faithful story about how we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or see, according to the power that works in us. Listen, we've got to have faith. If we're going to survive, we're 
going to make it over and we're going to get through this, my brothers and sisters, we're going to have to spend time, hear me, in this season, working on our faith. Yeah. It's obvious that it's impossible for an adult to worship a conception and a construct of God that exists in the mind of a child going to Sunday school. So you and I are going to have to decide in this season that we're going to make the sacrifice, create the time to serve, to study, so we can see a God who is big enough. Amen. Trouble with many people today that they have not found a God who is big enough for our modern needs. But church, the good news is, is that the God we serve yeah. he is big enough. Yeah. Let, me, let me try one more time. I said he's big enough. He's high enough. Yeah. He's holy enough. He's righteous enough. He is strong enough. He's powerful enough to hear our faintest cry. Amen. Amen. And the songwriter said he will answer by and by. Church, in a very real sense. That's what we need the people of God in our text. Our text here is a text that opens with the people who are apparently in a precarious predicament. And, and the text says that their position was in peril and their destiny, hear me, was solely dependent on divine intervention. Yes. True, true enough, there are some places that you will find yourself that the only way you're going to get out of it is that if God steps in and brings you out. I'll say that one more time before I take it back. If you have lived just a little while, you have found yourself in a place that you realize that if I'm going to get out of this, ain't nobody going to be able to do it but the Lord. And let me pause right here and parenthetically insert a praise break. If you are sitting in your living room and you have lived through a situation and you know that nobody get you through it but God, go ahead and lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you right now for bringing you through, for bringing you out, and for bringing you over. But here it is, it starts with faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, in a word, what our text is taking to teach us first, their response to a crisis was intercession. The first response for the people of God in the pandemic is intercession. Intercession is the act of the people of God petitioning God on behalf of other people. Yep, yeah, you heard it right. The first response for a pandemic is for the people of God to talk to God about his people. Listen, intercession is what the child of God ought to be doing in this season. The people in our text will pray for their king who in his wisdom had enough sense, watch this, to, to worship God before he went to war with his people against his enemy. Friends, let me encourage you to follow the example of these people who were in peril, who prayed for their king. I know that may not be popular right now. I know you don't want to hear it, but if we're going to get through this, we're going to have to drop our egos at the door of the sanctuary and pray for your president and pray for your governor and pray for your mayor and Lord have mercy, pray for your preacher because anybody who has been given charge of people in a pandemic are out up all night and they're getting up early in the morning because they have to carry the burdens and what we need is a people who are praying for us. I wish I had a church in this this morning because I know you watching me at home, but if you think about it, there are a few of you watching that know that the only reason you are here today is because you had somebody praying for you. They had you on their mind. They took the time and they prayed for you. And you can sit there and look at me like that if you want to, but if you are honest with yourself and you are honest with me and you are honest with God, you had a prayer grandma, and that's why you still here today, and you ought to tell God, thank you right now. Thank you. Thank you. Tell him, thank you. But you had a prayer mom. Thank you. That you had a prayer father. Thank you. That you had a prayer deacon. Thank you. That you had a prayer preacher. I wonder, is there anybody right now who is sitting in their own space who will just type, I'm thankful that God prayed, that somebody prayed to God for me. Yes. Listen, listen, as we face our own futility and fragility. Let us shift our focus 
and our attention towards what can really make a difference in this season. Listen, we, we got to figure out what we can do. I, I've heard enough talk about what we can't do, but now we are in a season where we need to talk about what we can do. We, these people decided that if they could not do anything else, that their God was big enough to hear and answer their prayer. And so their first response was that these people prayed. They made intercessions. They prayed. Listen, they prayed for safety. They prayed for security. They prayed for sustaining power. And they prayed for victory. Why? They prayed because the Bible says that the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous avail of much. They prayed because they knew that God said, if I shut up heaven, then there be no rain. If I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves in me and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forget their sins and I will heal their land. But right now, what we need to do in response to a pandemic is become a people who don't mind praying. Yeah. We gotta pray. We gotta pray. They pray that God him, would send help from heaven. Uh-huh. They pray that God would send help from the sanctuary. See, for them, the sanctuary was the dwelling place for God, that his presence was in the sanctuary. So in essence, they were praying that, watch this, when they left the church building, when they, while they were in a season where they couldn't get to the church building, that the God that they came to the church building to worship would be with them when they couldn't get there. Boy, I wish I had some help uh, in, in your space this morning that you know that the same God who met with you at 5601 Fletcher Avenue is the same God who is watching over you right now. That the same God that we gather together to lift his name on high is the same one lifting up your head right now. That the same God who is with us here is the same God who is with you there. And I need you right now to believe the fact that if he can meet us here, that if he can meet you there, we serve a God who can meet us anywhere. Yeah. Listen, listen, my brothers and my sisters, what you and I have got to develop is, watch this, a theology of preposition. Let me, let, me, let me let you write that down. We've got to develop a theology of preposition. That is, you and I have got to study and see a God who is both with us and for us. Let me, let me, let me repeat that because I don't want you to miss it. We've got to develop a theology of preposition that suggests to us that we serve a God who is both with us and for us. Why do you say that, preacher? Because my Bible tells me that if God be for us, what shall they say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Listen, when Israel came out of Egypt, God was with them and God was for them. When Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, God was with him and God was for him. Brothers and sisters, when David had to defeat Goliath, God was with him and God was for him. When Jesus marched up Calvary's hill, God was with him and God was for him. But I want you to know is that, brothers and sisters, God is not just with us on mountaintop experiences. When Joseph was in the pit, God was with him and for him. When Joseph was in prison, God was with him and for him. When Joseph was raised up to the palace, God was with him and for him. You and I got to develop a theology of preposition and begin to praise God. Why? Because he is both with us and for us. And when you know God is with you and for you, you don't mind praying to him. Listen, when we have the opposite preposition, our intercession will transition into declaration. The declaration in our text begins with one word, now. In, in Psalm 20 and verse number 6, the Bible says, now. I want you to circle that. I want you to, to underline that. I want you to highlight that because the Bible says in our text, now. Now is an emphatic transition. The now comes after the petition. 
Let me say that one more time. Now denotes an emphatic transition that only comes after the petition. The now comes after the intercession. The now comes after the prayer. And church, I come today to tell you that if it's going to happen, it's going to happen after prayer. After the prayer, the people will poise and position to proclaim that God will be with them. And as a consequence, hear me, victory was sure. Amen. Verse 6 is a declaration that states that we pray. And when we pray, that that comes with confidence that God will not simply hear, but that God will hear and answer. And that's why we sing that old faithful song, just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. Here it is, and I'm getting ready to close, brothers and sisters. The third response for the people of God in the middle of a pandemic that is found in this text is a response of celebration. Listen, the King and his people. The king and his people. Y'all hear that? The king and his people did not wait for the battle to be over. The king and his people did not wait, hear me, for the battle to begin. The king and his people began to celebrate what God would do before they ever left the sanctuary. I wish I wish I had two or three people who would, who would type, I hear you coming past them all. And, and listen, they celebrated before they ever set foot on the battleground. And before I go, let me tell you, we, we don't celebrate in our own competence, but we celebrate just like they did. They didn't celebrate in silver and gold, so don't you celebrate on what your bank account holds. They didn't celebrate in horses and chariots, so don't you celebrate celebrate over that car you drive and that house you live in. They did not celebrate in their confidence and their confidence, so don't you celebrate that degree you have on the wall, because after all, all of that stuff is here today, and it may be gone tomorrow. They said, we don't celebrate, we won't boast in horses and chariots, but we will boast in the name of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had you in here with me right now, because I will tell you that there is power in the name of Jesus. And when we pray, when we worship, when we work, when we sing, when we come together, when we do whatever we do in the name of the Lord, heals come into malice. When we worship, when we pray, when we sing, when we do whatever we do in the name of the Lord, trials turn into triumph. When we do the life in the name of the Lord, victims become victors. When we do the life in the name of the Lord, folks that have been down get lifted up. When we do life in the name of the Lord, folks that are sick get healthy. When we do life in the name of the Lord, things that are broken get fixed. When we do life in the name of the Lord, listen, I don't care who you are and where you came from and what you have and what side of town you live on, learn how to do what you do in the name of the Lord. Jesus. He lived and died to buy our heart. Yeah. 
One faithful Friday, they buried our Lord in a borrowed tomb because they crucified him. But early on the third day, he rose with all power in his hands. There's an empty grave that approves that our Savior lives. And hear me, brothers and sisters, don't, don't, don't miss this. If God can raise a crucified Christ from the dead, then God can help us to climb over this mountain called coronavirus. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that God will save his anointing. Yes, he will. He will save his anointing. So if you want to become a child of God today, type that in your comments. We will reach out to you and talk to you about how important it is for you to believe the gospel. Because Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. We will encourage you to make a decision to change your life. We then we will encourage you to acknowledge Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what the Bible calls confession. And Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. And then we'll figure out a way to get you in the water of graves of baptism. Uh -huh. I still believe the Bible is right. When Peter said, after he had preached the gospel for the first time, they asked him a question, what shall we do? He said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage you today. If you're watching today, know that no matter how big or how bad it gets, mm -hmm. our God is big enough. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with our heads bowed once more and again to tell you thank you. Thank you, thank you for being good. Thank you for being great. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being a God that we can talk to, that we can tell about all of our troubles. Lord, thank you for being a God who will hear and answer our prayers. And thank you, Lord, for being a God who will put us in a position to celebrate before we ever see what you will do. Lord, we ask that you will watch over all of us, that you will heal those who are sick. Lord, that you will find, that you will send us a cure, and that you will heal our land. Lord, we love you, and we praise you in our going out and in our coming in. In Jesus' name we pray that every child of God say amen, amen. and amen. May God bless you. May he keep you. Stay safe and keep the faith.